Welcome to Liftoff, your first place where you can find everything space, and often SpaceX. In today's episode, we will tell you about SpaceX Falcon Heavy rocket, which beat out the SLS and scores another major NASA contract to Jupiter. Years before the space agency's flagship Europa Clipper mission is scheduled to lift off, NASA and SpaceX are already determining the specifics of the launch, including which Falcon Heavy boosters will support it. On July 23rd, 2021, after years of rumors, NASA officially announced that it will no longer be planned to launch Europa Clipper on its own SLS rocket and would instead contract to send the spacecraft to Jupiter on a Falcon Heavy. In terms of sheer prestige, no other mission on Falcon Heavy's manifest comes close. Expected to weigh around 6 tons, Europa Clipper is a building-sized spacecraft that aims to orbit Jupiter for years, performing dozens of flybys of the planet's icy moons, several of which are almost certainly to have liquid oceans. Europa, the mission's namesake, is its primary focus, and whether or not the funding or political motivation for such an ambitious mission transpires, Europa Clipper was always partially meant to be a scouting mission for a nuclear-powered lander. On its own though, Clipper has already blown past its original $2 billion budget from 2013 and is now on track to cost more than $4.5 billion, making it the most expensive NASA mission currently in development, second only to the $9 billion James Webb Space Telescope. In other words, NASA is entrusting SpaceX to launch what is perhaps the most expensive mission to the outer solar system in the history of planetary exploration. That makes it all the more noteworthy that NASA has already given the OK for SpaceX to plan to launch Europa Clipper on a Falcon Heavy rocket, with at least two of its three boosters already flight proven. According to mission scientist Bob Papalado, Clipper mission design lead Brett Buffington revealed in Spacecraft System Integration Review that SpaceX intends to reuse two Falcon Heavy side boosters that are currently scheduled to debut as early as next year on a different NASA mission. Known as Psyche, that mission, also scheduled to fly on a Falcon Heavy, is scheduled to launch no earlier than August 2022 and is designed to explore an asteroid that is believed to be almost entirely composed of metal. With Europa Clipper scheduled to launch in October 2024, that undoubtedly makes this the earliest a Falcon booster assignment has ever been confirmed. And probably the earliest SpaceX itself has assigned flight-proven boosters to a specific mission. It also makes those particular boosters quite special. Unlike Psyche, which will leave plenty of margin for SpaceX to recover at least two of the Falcon Heavy's three boosters, Europa Clipper will need almost every ounce of performance the rocket can give to send the much larger spacecraft much faster and further. Barring a major surprise, that means that Falcon Heavy will launch Europa Clipper in a fully expendable configuration. For SpaceX, being able to use at least two flight-proven boosters on that expendable mission will make expanding two Falcon Heavy boosters, which are otherwise capable of launching at least 10 times in their lifetime, a much easier pull to swallow. For NASA, the space agency is likely already familiar with the reality that flight-proven hardware actually improves schedule confidence, which is crucial for a mission like Europa Clipper, thanks to its 21-day launch window. Nonetheless, it does still raise the question of whether NASA will allow SpaceX to fly Psyche's Falcon Heavy side boosters once or even twice more in the more than two years they'll otherwise have to spend in storage between Psyche and Europa Clipper. A Falcon Heavy rocket is currently scheduled to launch a commercial moon lander and NASA's Viper Moon rover as early as Q4 2023. Most recently, NASA purchased a Falcon Heavy to launch NOAA's GoU weather satellite in Q2 2024. In 2022 alone, SpaceX has almost at least three other non-NASA missions scheduled to launch before Psyche, raising another possibility that Psyche itself might fly on once-flown boosters that would then fly a third, fourth, or even fifth time with Europa Clipper. That might seem like an unlikely possibility, but NASA has already shown that it's happy to launch cargo dragons with multiple non-NASA missions in their past and will soon launch DART, an asteroid impact spacecraft, on another Falcon Heavy booster that last launched Starlink satellites. 
Additionally, with ArabSat 6A and STP-2, SpaceX already demonstrated in 2019 that it can launch Falcon Heavy, recover its two side boosters and relaunch those same boosters on a different Falcon Heavy mission less than two months later, and for the US military no less. The total contract award amount for launch services is approximately $178 million. This is a significant moment for SpaceX, as the company will be entrusted with one of NASA's highest priority exploration missions. The deal also saves NASA about $2 billion. The selection of a launch vehicle for this ambitious mission has been subjected to a long, drawn-out political process. Originally, at the urging of Congress, NASA planned to launch the spacecraft on its Space Launch System rocket. There were two reasons for this. Legislators wanted to find additional missions for the SLS rocket. And second, the powerful SLS rocket had the ability to get the clipper to Jupiter within about four years. However, many in the scientific community preferred to launch on SpaceX's Falcon Heavy for a variety of reasons. For one, SpaceX offered launch services at a steep discount compared to the SLS rocket, which the White House estimated would cost more than $2 billion Scientists were also concerned that the often delayed SLS rocket would simply not be ready for a 2024 launch date, and selecting it would delay the science mission. However, politicians continued to insist that NASA launch Clipper on the SLS rocket. Three different events finally forced legislators to relent. First, in late 2018, NASA scientists concluded that the Falcon Heavy could complete the Clipper mission without needing gravity assist from Venus, and therefore it would not have to go into the inner solar system. The Falcon Heavy could do so with the addition of a Star 48 kickstage. United Launch Alliance's Delta IV Heavy rocket would have to necessitate a Venus flyby, significantly increasing the thermal shielding needed on the Clipper spacecraft, so it was eventually ruled out. Nobody is saying we're not going on the SLS, Barry Goldstein of NASA said in a meeting in November 2018. But if by chance we don't, we don't have the challenge of the inner solar system. This was a major development. This was a big deal for us. Second, after finalizing plans for the Artemis moon program, NASA realized that the primary contractor of the SLS rocket's core stage, Boeing, simply was not up to the task of building the additional rocket for the Clipper mission in time. All of the SLS core stages, NASA officials realized, would be needed to support the effort to land humans on the moon in the mid-2020s. This large vehicle is powered off the pad by two very large solid rocket boosters that produce significant vibrations. SLS program officials had been telling the agency's leadership that the torsional load, essentially a measurement of twisting and vibration, was of a certain value. What do you think? Will SpaceX be able to successfully launch NASA's Jupiter Moon mission? Let us know your thoughts in the comment section down below. If you want to see more interesting videos like this one, subscribe to the channel and hit the notification button. Thank you so much for your support. I'll see you in the next one.